Hi everyone, welcome to the next installment of Charts in Perspective, where we use charts to dive into the world of economics and financial markets. I'm Jennifer Nash, an economic and market research analyst for Vetify. Today, we're going to do some analysis and look inside the Consumer Price Index, the best known measure of inflation. We'll examine what inflation means at the micro level, specifically what it means to your household. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, aka the BLS, divides all expenditures into eight categories and then assigns a relative size to each, as shown here in this pie chart. On the right hand side, the slices are listed in the order used by the BLS in their tables, not the relative size. The first three follow the traditional order of urgency, food, shelter, and clothing, which when combined account for over 60% of the index. Then we have transportation, which comes before medical care, and recreation precedes the lumped category of education and communication. Lastly, the other goods and services category refers to a bizarre grab bag of odd fellows, such as tobacco, cosmetics, financial services, funeral expenses, etc. So now that we have an idea of what all goes into the consumer price index, let's see how these categories have grown over time. In this chart, we can see the cumulative percent change in price for each of the eight categories since 2000. Not surprisingly, medical care and housing have been the fastest growing categories, each growing more than 100% since the turn of the century. At the opposite end is apparel, which has currently only grown around 2% since 2000 and has even deflated at times over the past 24 years. You'll notice a unique feature of apparel is the obvious seasonal volatility of the contour line. Transportation, the dark green line, is the other category with high volatility, much more dramatic and irregular than the seasonality of apparel. Within transportation, there's a wide range of subcategories, but the volatility can largely be attributed to the motor fuel subcategory. Now, one category you might have noticed that's not listed as part of the consumer price index is energy. And that's because the BLS does not lump energy costs into a single expenditure category, but instead, it includes energy subcategories in two of its eight components, in housing and in transportation. With that being said, the BLS still tracks energy as a separate aggregate index comprised of household energy and motor fuels. In this chart here, we've added the highly volatile energy aggregate to our eight categories, and we can immediately see the impact of energy costs on transportation. In their latest annual weighting, the BLS assigned energy a relative importance of 6.655 out of 100, meaning the government calculates inflation on the assumption that energy in one form or another constitutes 6.7% of total expenditures, with 3.4% to transportation fuels, mostly gasoline, and 3.3% going to household energy, mostly electricity. Now, our next chart should come as no surprise to families that are footing the bill for college tuition, a subcategory of the education and communication expenditure category. Now, even though the BLS only weighs college tuition and fees at 1.275% of total expenditures, those households with college students have felt the strain on their budgets with the relentless growth in tuition and fees. I've separately plotted college tuition and fees in this chart as the light red dashed line. You'll notice that the steady staircase pattern in this cost coincides with the annual cost increases in the late summer for each academic year. Since 2000, college tuition has grown by almost 185%. I must admit though that the tuition series in this chart is overly dramatic because the BLS calculates tuition based on the sticker price, which ends up being higher than what many households actually pay because it ignores financial aid grants that can significantly lower the real cost. At the start of the video, I said the consumer price index is the best known measure of inflation and therefore warrants a lot of attention, but economists and policymakers like to pay even more attention to core inflation, which excludes food and energy. Now, this is a somewhat peculiar metric in that one of the exclusions, energy, is an aggregate that combines specific pieces of two consumption categories, transportation and housing. And then the other exclusion, food, is a major part of the food and beverage category. But I'd like to point out that beverage for the BLS refers to alcoholic beverages. So coffee, milk, Coca-Cola are excluded from core inflation, but Budweiser and Jack Daniels are not. Now this chart here shows the annualized rate of change and the cumulative change in CPI and core CPI since 2000. 
Consumers, especially those who've managed expenses over several years, are most closely attuned to the top lines because it's easier to grasp the real impact of inflation on purchasing power over time. Virtual response is to moan over price increases and take delight when prices are cheaper. But in reality, households vary dramatically in the impact that inflation has upon them. For example, when gas prices skyrocket, a suburban family with long car commutes suffers far more than a metro family with short subway commutes or, or remote workers with no commute at all. And the pain is even more extreme for low-income households whose grocery money shrinks when gas prices rise. Additionally, those households with high medical costs are significantly more vulnerable than comparable households with low expenses in this category. One thing we can be certain about is this. Inflation volatility has a painful effect on lower income households, those on fixed incomes, those with higher ratios of tuition, transportation, or medical costs, and all households whose discretionary spending is more dream than reality. Thanks for tuning in and taking a look inside the Consumer Price Index with me. For more economic and market insights, you can find my content regularly on the Advisor Perspectives website under the AP Charts section.